Okay, so let's talk about the conserve server. So to start off, this is what the home page looks like when you launch the website. Um, not much to go off, but uh, hopefully we'll try and uh, walk through the steps needed for this website together. So just a little overview. The conserve server enables the user to look at conserved homologous sequences in molecules like DNA and RNA. The server works its magic by looking at the relative frequency of amino acid and nucleotide positions and comparing said frequency among different species or within species. And this comparative info comes from other databases such as BLAST. The frequency rate of these conserved intramolecule positions help to paint an evolutionary picture of how important, functionally or otherwise, this position is to any particular organism. So when you launch the website, you can kind of find a, a breakdown of um, what this website allows you to do. And um, here's the proper definition that is displayed on the website. And you can find all these different sections under the Overview tab. Just giving you a little introduction here um, as to uh, what we use the Conserve server for in biology. So why is this website important? Uh, it's important because it allows the user to look at sequence conservation to better understand the significance of that sequence. It, uh, Within the scientific community, there has been a rapid shift to using genetic data for evolutionary classification, in addition to morphological data, and the ability to look at how certain nucleotide sequences are conserved from an evolutionary standpoint could potentially help with classification. Perhaps one species selects for certain amino acids or nucleotides because of their aid in survival. This hypothesis could potentially be researched with the help of the conserve server. So to read your uh, search results, let's look at the color grade here first off. The color grade for the molecules is read from left to right, with turquoise being the least conserved and magenta being the most conserved. Again, conserved just means the frequency of it. Any areas in yellow are considered uncertain by the mapping program and should be treated as outliers in your data sets. The frequency of these nucleotide and amino acid positions are colored on a 3D model of the molecule in question. This is the uh, molecule here. Here's the color gradient scale. <clears throat> the 3D model is directly imported from the protein data bank, or if it's not available, you have to use a software program called Modeler to predict a structure. And uh, the molecule I used for my presentation was not in the data bank. So this is just an example uh, that was rendered. So it has applications uh, for, you know, general uh, molecular biology uh, research. Um, you can use it for studying conservation of amino acid and nucleotide positions from an evolutionary standpoint, as previously mentioned. Um, in this class's particular case, we could use CONSERF to look at the frequency of our SLC6A1 gene, which is what we've been looking at all semester. We could potentially pick a nucleotide sequence and run its frequency against all known mutated versions of this gene. But again, because there is no current model in the protein data bank of SLC61, um, I will be using the example that was generated for me for the rest of this presentation. So, navigating this data bank, um, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure book with each choice you click on, multiple new choices appear that you have to make. The further you delve into the website, the more complicated it becomes, so reading over the overview page is highly suggested. The first choice you make is whether to look at an amino acid or nucleotide sequence, which you will have to search for with its protein databank ID number. So here's the example layout that the website generated for me. 
um, either amino acid or nucleotide sequence tabs. You must use a PDB uh, generated molecule or upload your own. And you have to pick a chain identifier for the sequence you're studying. If there is no known structure, you will again be asked to use this program called Modeler that will predict its structure. You will also be prompted to upload a MSA or a multiple sequence alignment file. If you don't have one lying around, Consurf will build one for you and you can tweak the parameters to your liking. Consurf pulls all this data from numerous other databases to compile its finished product for you. <clears throat> So, because this is an evolutionary-based comparison model, the website asks for your preferred calculation method, Bayesian, or maximum likelihood. Uh, just a little review, Bayesian method creates a posterior probability of trees, meaning it draws on previously inferred data to compile a phylogenetic tree, and maximum likelihood uses the statistical analysis method to create parameters that your data can fall into for classification. After you select your preferences, Consurf will ask if you want to be notified when your job is completed. For me, when I was running my example, I just kept the window open while the job was running, and it finished in about a minute. So this is what your running page looks like while you're waiting on it to finish. Um, this is after you submit your job. Um, it'll also tell you where it pulled all of its additional data from, different websites such as SwissPro. The databank and BLAST were used here. Um, after it's completed, Consurf will give you links with info about your nucleotide or amino acid sequence, as well as your conservation scores. So here's what a typical result page looks like. Um, you can look at the molecule either with the uh, protein databank generated model, or you can view it in Chimera, or you can just look at the conservation scores. Uh, pretty much anything to your liking. Um, it has instructions to tell you how to make other kinds of figures, like again in Chimera as well. It, Consurf also provides a Wasabi version of the multiple sequence alignment and a phylogenetic tree generated by Wasabi. And Consurf itself also generates its own phylogenetic tree for you to view, but you have to have the JavaScript to look at it on your computer. Uh, Consurf also produces a colorblind friendly scale as well, which is very nice, um, in my opinion. So, here is our generated uh, model. As you can see here, it had areas of high conservation and areas of low conservation. We can look at our color gradient scale over here and track the sort of teal, turquoise, blue areas, find the areas of low conservation, look at the magenta and pink areas, and those are areas of high concentration. So that means those particular amino acid sequences are highly conserved throughout this particular uh, genetic uh, evolutionary line. Uh, this is our wasabi sheet that was also generated. So this is a, a kind of like a, a code method to look at the uh, data that was generated by Conserve. Um, it's just sort of a, a broken down way of looking at uh, your genetic code that uh, you are um, looking for as far as conservation wise. And that's it. Hope this helped.